Cruise in risky business. <laughs> she's not. She's asleep. She's dreaming, and she's laughing. She must be killing someone. <laughs> Here's today's Isabella Stashkowski on how you two can sleep better. The kids are in the classroom. Mum and Dad are returning to the office. But in 2021 and 2020, our sleep schedules changed. Now they're well and truly out of routine. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. It's time to get back on track. We certainly know that people who have consistently poor sleep for a long period of time have more health problems and a shorter life expectancy. We're going to talk to leaders in the field, look at diet and find out when to check in with a specialist. Mr Sandman, bring me a dream. First, sleep expert Dr Carmel Harrington, who explains lockdowns and the like have impacted us all differently. Research does show that some people actually have been sleeping better but other people have not been sleeping as well because there's a lot of anxiety. She says getting back into a healthy rhythm starts with the morning. But the way we change the, our ability to get to sleep at night is to actually change our morning wake up time because when we wake up in the morning we set our biological clock. Bringing your wake up time forward by just 15 minutes each day will help you naturally regain a routine. So wake me up when it's all over. Next, let's look at food and diet. I think the best tip to get a good night's sleep is all based on the patterns in which you follow through the day. Eating food that's nourishing and things that aren't going to kind of overstuff and stimulate us. Dr Jamie Chambers says before bed you should avoid caffeine, foods high in saturated fats and foods high in sugar. To improve sleep, try eating dinner earlier or introduce a Mediterranean or DASH style diet. So we know that lean protein, think things like chicken, turkey, dairy products, they contain an amino acid called tryptophan and that helps to produce our sleep hormone. But the key is that we need to eat it with a good quality carbohydrate. What we drink also plays a part. So what's the verdict on alcohol? We know that perhaps one glass of wine or one drink might help to send us off to sleep. But anything more than that has been shown to disrupt those deep sleep patterns that we have. If you're still struggling, is it time to speak to a specialist? If in fact you're following all the good guidelines about good sleep hygiene and you're trying to get your, your seven to nine hours and you just can't because you keep waking up or you sleep a long time and you still feel awful, then it's time to seek help. There are different forms of sleeping disorders. A test like the one I'm trying out can help to diagnose them. Lie down flat on your back. You're able to sleep in any position that you find comfortable. We're measuring your brain waves, your breathing, uh, movements of your muscles and, uh, and your heart rate as well. So your results look great. You just may need a little bit more sleep. Maybe take a day off. <laughs> So when it comes to sleep, essentially all the old school stuff still works. Daily exercise, winding down without screens and focusing on a balanced diet. Find some wind down activity that works for you. Might be folding the washing, might be having a bath. And of course it's all about finding that holy grail of routine. Routine is the answer. So the most important thing is to give yourself a regular sleep opportunity. Bring us on. I've been told to say there's more after the break, but thank goodness they're all asleep. <laughs>